Hello and welcome to another episode on atomic structure. Today we'll be determining how to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, you will need a periodic table and the information that is on it to be able to determine the number of proton, neutrons, and electrons. Um, you won't need it for this episode because I have these periodic table squares already outlined for us. So let's get started. So here we have the information that is contained on the periodic table for phosphorus. And so let's analyze this periodic table block and determine what it means. So this number right here, it'll always be a whole number. It'll always be the smaller number. This is the atomic number. The atomic number is going to tell us two things. It will show us the number of electrons. It will also show us the number of protons. Okay, so when we're talking about an element, the number of electrons and protons will be the same. And just to be familiar with it, you should know that this is the element symbol. The first letter will always be capitalized, and if there is more than one letter, um, the subsequent letters will always be lowercase. And then here, of course, we have the name of the element. And then finally, what we have here is the mass number. It does have other names. Sometimes you might hear just atomic mass. Other times you also might hear it being called the average atomic mass. Okay, uh, maybe you'll hear it called average mass number, but um, expect to be hearing those interchangeably. So what this tells us is, this gives us the number of protons and electrons, or excuse me, number of protons and neutrons. So we'll have to calculate this one. So in um, these examples, for our atomic number, that tells us the number of protons, number of electrons, so we can say over here that we have 15 electrons. We also have 15 protons, because our atomic number is 15. Those numbers will always be equal in a neutral atom. Okay, and for this next one, to calculate the number of neutrons, what we're going to do is we are going to take our mass number and we round it up to the whole number because you can't have just part of a um, proton or neutron. So we round it up to the whole number and we'll have here 31. And then we're going to subtract the number of protons that we have. Well. Um, the atomic number told us the number of protons, so 31 minus 15 is going to give us 16. And this is going to be the number of neutrons. So for our final answer over here, we'll have 16 neutrons. All right, pretty simple. Let's do a couple examples. All right, in this periodic table block, um, we have aluminum. And right here, this is our atomic number. OK, 
Okay, our symbol is AL. Our name of the element is aluminum. And our mass number is 26.98. Okay, uh, we're going to round that up, and so we, we can just round that up to the whole number, and that's going to be 27. Okay, so our atomic number, remember that tells number of protons, and it also tells us the number of electrons. So we can say we have 13 electrons. We have 13 protons. If you think about it, they should always be equal because electrons are negative, protons are positive, and you want to have a balance of charge. So hopefully that helps you remember that. Now, um, to calculate the number of neutrons, we're going to take our rounded mass number, 27. We're going to subtract 13. And what we should have here is 14 neutrons. All right. And it is that simple, guys. So in here we have 13 electrons, 13 protons. To determine the number of neutrons, we do 27 minus 13 equals 14. Let's do another example. This one is fluorine. So we have an atomic number here of 9. So that's our atomic number. And what does that equal? That equals to our number of electrons, and that's also the number of protons. So we have nine electrons. We have nine protons. And then with our average atomic mass, or mass number if you want to call it that, we're going to round that up. To 19. Okay, so we're going to have 19 minus 9. And that's going to give us 10 neutrons. So what do we have here? We have 9 electrons, 9 protons, and 10 neutrons. All right, guys, thank you, thank you for watching this episode of how to calculate the number of proton, electrons, and neutrons. If you are interested in having some practice sheets, I'll leave a description below to my Teachers Pay Teacher store. And thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a nice day.